Because our JavaScript deals directly with the user interactions of the website, we need to really think about the UI and the UX, that is the user interface and the user experience that goes into our website. All I have done is renamed playing with JS3 to playing with JS4 in my own fork here. And so feel free to fork the last one and you can follow along as we build something better. Right off the bat, we notice that the website starts black because that's our default value for this picker. So let's say value, it's a value attribute here in our input, and we'll start it out by being CCCCCC. Now that's the default value. So when we save, refresh our page, and our default value is gray. So everything's a little more readable, still not beautiful. All right, and we notice also that this uh, color picker looks kind of ugly. So I'm actually going to separate our color picker and put it in a div. So this is our second div. We'll say class equals UI dash panel and we'll wrap our input inside of that div, okay? Now something funny just happened. You'll notice, if we scroll this over a little bit, in our CSS, all of the targeting we did before was with div. So it's going to do that same thing to all of our divs. We have the same hover, the same styling, really gross, we do not want that. So what we will do is, instead of targeting div, we will use this well, instead of just having ID container, we'll add a class of container. The reason I'm doing that is because you don't want to use ID selectors in your CSS if you can help it. There's a lot of reasons for that, a little bit of controversy. I'll try to put an article down in the description that you can read if interested on why we do that. But we've got a class container. So I will just substitute our div for a class container. You do that in CSS by typing dot or period, then the name of your class, and this will target our class container. We'll do the same thing down here, dot container. Again, the dot and then the name of your class is just signifying that it is a class name. That's what the dot means. Okay, so that functionality still works. It no longer affects this one here. Side note on that, and again, we'll talk about this more later, but if I did want to target that div using its ID of container, I use a pound sign for that. And I could say color red, sorry, background color red, and we would have a red background color. We're not gonna do that right now. So we will now, we have the class of UI panel, so I can say, dot UI dash panel, curly braces, and here we can say margin 30 pixels. Okay, so we see that this right away is giving it a margin of 30 pixels all around it, so it's pushing the left and the top, making it go down. We're not actually gonna do that, we just wanted to make sure that we've selected our selector, selected our selector, <laughs> so, Let's do something interesting. We will say position fixed. That's a really interesting thing. This is what you use often on nav bars to make them stick to the top of your screen when you're scrolling down. It's fixed to the top of the screen. So no matter what's happening, wherever you're scrolling, it's fixed somewhere. It's not going to move with the scroll. So that's what we've just done here by saying position fixed. We tell it where to go when the position is fixed. It will only work if we've changed the position. And we can say left, we'll say 20 pixels actually. Notice how it moves out from the left side of the screen. And then we will say top 50%. Now that's gonna put it basically in the center of the screen. In order to do vertical alignment, and I will be doing a whole video on this, there's a little trick that we do that goes just like this. We say transform 
and we say translate y, and then we'll say negative 50%. Basically, this is taking the height of our div UI panel, and it's taking 50% of that height and moving it up 50%. So we will add a background color of something a little darker than our background here. We'll say 555. And we need to give this a little bit of a height and width before we'll see much change here. So let's say height, height 100 pixels. Interesting, interesting, okay. And then we will say a width. Sorry for the noise, everybody. There's stuff going on outside. We'll say width of 200 pixels. All right, check it out. It doesn't look great yet. We're going to add in our HTML a label. There we go. And we'll say, um, yeah, let's say color actually. Color is our label. Wonderful. So now we've got uh, a label saying color. So we're actually going to say .ui panel label. And remember, this is going to target the label inside of our class UI panel. We'll say color white. There we go, a little more legible. And margin left, 20 pixels. Sorry, I meant margin right. Little trial and error there. And margin left, uh, 30 pixels. You know what, there's a better way of doing this. We will say in UI panel, um, text align center. There we go. Let's change our height. I'm just playing with this as we go so that we can see how things feel a little bit and we'll add a padding. You'll start to get an idea of what all these things do in our layout. And you can see we pushed down the label in the input by adding padding. We're looking a little bit better. I still would prefer some rounded corners, border radius, uh, five pixels. Great. And see if this still works here. Wonderful. I'm excited. Let's add a header to our, just like we used H1, we can use H4 for smaller headers. It's like the fourth level of subheaders. So let's say UI panel. It's a great name for a UI panel. Huh. And we can target our H4. Sorry, here we go. Let's add .ui panel H4. And we can say margin zero. There we go. We'll actually just say margin top zero because it was just getting a little crazy. And then we'll say margin bottom to let everything fit in there and we'll just say five pixels. That's because we've got a default margin on headers and so we need to get rid of it, downsize a little bit to fit inside here. We can say color white and we can still read it. That is good. Might even say negative five pixels here on the margin just to move it up a little bit more. A little bit of a hacky job, but it's, it's okay. We're doing, doing all right here. And we'll change the font size to be just a little bit bigger. We'll say 16 pixels. That's about what we were. Let's go 18. So we've got a user panel here. Now, no matter what we do, that will be right there in the middle. Even if we could scroll down, you'll notice it stays on the left side no matter what. That is fantastic. We have now got 
a dynamic website that we can change the background color based off of the user panel. Um, I'll even change this to say background color. And that is just amazing. That is our first website, Dustin's website, the best website in the world. Continue watching the videos, comment down below if you have any questions, give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and subscribe for the future videos. We're gonna keep them rolling out as quick as we can. We wanna help you just build a website as fast as possible. You guys are awesome for watching my video. Good luck building your website. Go see the next video.